I'll leave you with uh, Mate, who is going to <laughs> tell you about tracking some things you may use daily. Hi. First of all, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So, it's great to be in front of such an effective crowd. Um, I'm Matthew Schultz, and um, I'll be presenting uh, Breaking Industry Cycles at the Whim, uh, which mostly will be concentrating on high tech tools. So, you, you'll see what I mean. Uh, I work at the Security Research Lab. If you know uh, Fast and Old, uh, you know what I'm talking about. It's his company, and uh, it's a great place to work at. So, uh, just the table of contents. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about High Tech 2, the, uh, the, the uh, target of this attack. And um, it, it needs to be reverse engineered by, by Karsten in this case. And it's actually inside the thing at the bottom, you see it's BMW, so it's actually securing your, your car, if you have a BMW that is. Um, if you don't, it still probably does uh, secure your car. It's actually used in, in many, many places. And um, then I'll talk about how we actually uh, solve the, the problem, which is to recover the key, of course, because that's a physical key, but there's a digital key inside the thing that we want to get. And of course, it's not going to tell us the key, so we have to, we have to somehow find it. And to do that, we'll use the set solvers. And uh, then I'll just demo how, to do, how, how it actually works in, in practice. Uh, just for those who don't want uh, their cars to be hacked by my software, it's not actually being hacked by my software. There's lots of things going around, and, um, and, and, and the stuff that's on the internet doesn't actually solve your, your car, so it won't, you, you won't be broken into by my software or our software, I would say. But it's, you know, it, it's a good demonstration of how, how it actually works out, more or less. Um, so this is the, uh, the Philips, or, well, let's say Philips NXT also, Cypher. Um, you see, uh, it's actually used for cars, but it's also used by the German army to secure buildings. So, yeah. And um, it, it's proprietary, so uh, Philips or NXT didn't really want uh, people to, uh, to, 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 to find out the cipher. Partially because it was pretty weak and partially because, uh, because they didn't want the competition to you know, manufacture these kind of keys you see there, uh, just for fun. And so uh, they didn't tell us what the cipher is, but well, that, that's, that's the cipher there. Um, it took a bit of uh, work to get to that point. Um, you actually have to physically take a piece of hardware like that into, into little, into little uh, microchips and all the electronic stuff around it, and then try to reverse engineer what's inside. And this is what's inside. So at the, at the top, you see uh, it's, it's a sheet register. It's got 48 bits from 0 to 47 there. It's a linear sheet feedback, so that's the feedback here. <laughs> and then there's a little filter function you see at the bottom, there's six of them, five of them pretty similar, and then the bottom there is a bit more complex, but nothing major. Uh, the, the, the interesting part here is that the, um, the feedback function is linear, which means that the more you, 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 you clock this cycle, because this thing is clocked, like, like, like little cycle here, and the more you, you clock this, uh, normally the more complex it gets. Except in this case, it doesn't actually get any more complex, which is a which is a big <laughs> major problem here, and we'll be exploiting that uh, to actually find the key because the key is actually loaded here. So there's a 48 key loaded here, more or less, you see. So from zero to 47, you 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 clock it around for, for a while, and then then there's the key stream, the, the stuff that goes out there at the bottom. Well, that's the one that's going to be emitted by the by the, the physical device that you saw. So what we need to do is we from, go from here, the very bottom there, to all the way back to the top there. And the way to do that is, is, is um, the way I do it, is to actually describe this whole system you see here as a set of equations. And so uh, when you talk about sets of equations, you, it's, it's a mathematical problem, right? You, you have lots of equations, just like in, in, in high school, you learn these equations, right? Uh, except in high school, you usually have these equations like 2 plus 4 equals A, or I don't know, A plus B is equal to C, things like that. Uh, and A and B are usually, uh, you know, normal normal numbers like 1, 2, and 3, and 4. And in this case, we're, we're binary, right? So we're all zeros and ones. So you have all these kind of equations that I just described, but except of having, you know, 1, and 2, and 3, and all the natural numbers, you would have zeros and ones. And uh, so you, you have these kind of equations, and you have to solve it one way or another. And I'm not going to write it down in a piece of paper, so I use a computer to do that. And there's something called the set solver, which uh, basically works 
with a, with a description of a set of equations that is called a conjunctional normal form up there, C and F, you see? It's pretty simple, it sounds you know, complicated, but it's not that difficult. So you have those, those variables, in this case x1, x2, and x3, and there's, there's that thing at the top, and you have to satisfy it. So the, the, you have to find some kind of solution to this equation that satisfies everything. And if you have a look, for instance, if I said x1 to true, so this thing is true here. If I said x2 to false, and this is true here, and x1 is true, so it's all, it's all satisfied. So I, I just satisfied this set of equations, that was simple. This only has three variables, so it's pretty, pretty simple to, to satisfy this set of equations. But the problem is that normally you don't have three variables, you might actually have 20,000, or 30, or 200, just for the fun. At each point, it really becomes difficult to satisfy this set of equations. And, uh, and if, you, if you have gone to uh, university, or if you haven't because you got bored or tired, but uh, the set is actually one of those definitions of, of, of hard. So this thing is, is really, really hard. It's, it, it's one of those things that, that, that gets painfully hard after you start to increase the number of variables. And uh, of course, here we're going to have a lot of variables because we're going to have 27, no, 48, just for the very top. You saw those 0 to 47. And then you're going to have even more because, of course, we're going to clock this. So we're going to de demonstrate this in time. So we're going to uh, unroll this cipher. And uh, we're going to have a pretty good number of variables. But we, we, we use this, this algorithm that you see at the bottom here called DPLL. This has been done lots of times ago. Uh, but it's pretty effective. And, and the way we do it is, is the most trivial way you can actually imagine to do this. And the first is that you take the formula. That's the thing at the back of the top of that. And if it's okay, you know, it's all, it doesn't have anything inside, well, that sounds, that's, that's good. We have, it's all satisfied. If it's not, then we're going to try one day. So I'm just going to set, I don't know, x1 to true, and see what happens. And we're going to pull ourselves recursively. And uh, if it doesn't satisfy, so x1 doesn't work out, then we reverse it. So x1 is not true now. It's going to be false. And we can do it again. So it's kind of a reverse, recursive algorithm to try every single possibility you can, you can try. It's, it's, it's the most dumb thing ever. And let's let's try. So let's try how this really works out. A uh, very small example here. So here's the thing. This this we call them closes. You see those things in, in brackets? They closes. So they, there's there's three variables again, x1, x2, and x3. And we have three closes here. And uh, I'm just going to set x1 to true and see what happens. So I I, I set x1 to true, and you see that and you see that this thing here. Well, x1 is true, so this thing is false. Nothing really happens. So I set x1 to true here as well. You see? I set x1 to true. So this thing means that no matter what I do with this, this, this close, close number two there, uh, x2 must be true because x1 is false. Uh, x1 is true there, so this thing is this thing here is false. So x2 must be true. So I set x2 to true. This is called a propagation. You see uh, point number two there? Two, close number two clo causes a, a so-called propagation here to x2 to true. And at this point, at this point I go to close number three and you say, I substitute, just like you know in the old days, like a is equal to b, e plus c, and you substitute c equals three into this equation. So I substitute all that I have, and I substitute x1 to true, so that's going to drop out. And I, I substitute x2 also true, so I'm going to drop this out because this is not x2, so this is false. And at which point close three means it's impossible. So this kind of set, setting of variables is impossible. I, I need to do something. And what I do is I reverse my guess. So I, I go back all the way. I reverse my guess. So x, x sound is false. I substitute it in every single equation. It's a three equation. Three equation. So I'm going to substitute. Uh, this thing is satisfied. Not x1 is, is true. Not x1 is true. Not x1 is true. OK, good, done. I just, I just satisfied my set of uh, equations. And uh, since this thing sounds very simple, but it's actually pretty complicated, I'm going to go over this multiple times. So if you didn't quite catch what I just said, Maybe you 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 will have multiple you will definitely have multiple possibilities to actually catch it. So here's another one. This is actually solving, uh, I think, uh, the London Underground using this kind of cipher. It's called MyTech, and uh, this is actually solving uh, the key that's stored inside those those little uh, plastic things that you you buy for a couple of I don't know 50 euros. You, you charge it up. It's called uh, Oyster Card. And uh, well, you don't really need to buy it, you see, at this point. But anyway, uh, uh, this is the start top, the top, you see? And that's where you're going to start this search. So this is like a big search, right? You're going to do this search, a binary search on this. And 
we're going to make a couple of guesses. And so we make a guesses, and we make guesses, and we make guesses. And then we do this kind of propagation. So we get guess a value, and then we substitute it in the set of equations. We guess another value, we substitute. Guess and substitute. And all the way, we're going to go all the way down to this point, where just like we had with that close number three before, if you remember, everything was false. So that was impossible. We knew it was impossible. So we had to reverse some of the guesses were wrong. And that's the point where we reach here. So this, this, this is called, the, I, I call it the first conflict. So this is a conflict. This is a, a problem that, that there's, there's something wrong. There's, there's something that went wrong. And what we're going to do is that we're going to backtrack. So we're going to go back and reverse and go back and reverse. All the way, in this point, actually, we actually reversed the very first guess. So, well, we were quite unlucky. And the first guess we made was, I don't know, probably false in this case. And, uh, and we're going to reverse it to true and see again what happens. And what happens is that we do again the same thing recursively. And uh, we have a couple of conflicts. And at the very end, you see there, there's a solution there. So I actually found the, the key that we were looking for. And, uh, and that's done. Uh, this thing is actually very small. This, uh, this tree probably has a maybe We get 1,000. We get 1,000 conflicts. Uh, we can do uh, 10,000 conflicts in under a second. So uh, this tree is, like, is built in less than 0 0.1 second. Uh, uh, the, the kinds of, of numbers that you have here is, is really large, really, really large. It's, it's pretty, al almost impossible to actually plot this kind of graph uh, with, with something real, with something real. Uh, OK. OK, so these, these are set solvers, and this is what they do. And, uh, and we're going to use them to, to prep uh, our new come problem, which is a high-tech tool uh, that's found in cars and army buildings. Uh, and there are multiple set solvers. So multiple, of course, these algorithms sound pretty damn simple. So anybody in this crowd probably could uh, write this down in Python, mm -hmm. in C, in Haskell, in C++, in take whatever. So you have set solvers that have been described, and all these languages are just described uh, in all the different ways. And uh, nobody knows how fast they are. So the best way to do it is to run races. So we have these competitions or races uh, to determine which, which is the fastest and which isn't the fastest. And um, well, crypto Reset is one of the uh, set solvers that we have. Um, it's actually made for cryptographic. There are certain optimizations that have been made so that it's faster for cryptographic uh, purposes, but it's actually uh, pretty fast anyway, in the sense that, for instance, the, the set solver, the competition, of course, doesn't actually uh, go around cryptographic. It, it's actually for every single kind, type of thing. And uh, set solvers are being used, for instance, if you have a, something called an Intel processor or an AMD, actually. Uh, it's actually used inside, uh, but not, not the manufactured piece of, of hardware that you get. But uh, before actually manufacturing the, the hardware, they actually verify your, your chip that is doing things right. Like, I don't know if you remember, there was this, this, this problem with the Intel Pentium that was doing, uh, doing uh, wrong calculations. And that could have been solved by this, this set solving thing. And, and also, uh, there is this problem with the Ariane rocket, if you remember. But they actually use this kind of software to verify that those bugs are not there. And, and SAT solvers are also used for bugs. Because you can then describe almost everything with equations, right? And they just describe the, the, the problem in equations. So they describe, for instance, that the, the input and the output are correct. And then they run the SAT solver if, if the actual hardware is implementing what they, they think it's implementing. And sometimes it tells you, no, <laughs> this is a bug. This, this is actually a way of, 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 of adding 2 and 3 into 6. And then you, you have a look at the hardware, and you see, OK, so there's something problem with that going on. And so this is general purpose. But that's over. Uh, um, Crypto Miss actually won this set race uh, last year. And there's going to be a, a set, set competition this year. It's called the race and the competition alternating years. Uh, so this is what we have here. It's a. Uh, it's a plot of how fast uh, cryptomism is on a set of benchmarks. And the set of benchmarks we are taking is 2009, that competition. And uh, the, the more far righter we are, the better the set solver is. And these are all the other set solvers at the point. And this is cryptomism. So it's pretty evident that at this point, as far as I know, uh, cryptomism is quite OK. But uh, the benchmarks can change. And cryptomism is actually the only set solver that is, co that is uh, collaborative. So if you want to join, um, I know politicians have used this, this, this set of phrases or set of words uh, quite a lot of times that the, uh, 